Welcome to how do I trigger business logic when a flow field changes? Hey, I'm Eric, and um, a version of this question came in the comments of another video a few days ago, and um, somehow it's a question that I have never really done a video about, and it's a, it's a very very common uh, question, especially among among new developers on on the platform but also from customers saying hey when this is when this whatever it is changes then um, i need something to happen um, but the challenge is that a flow field is not a field so nothing happens on that one so whenever so actually let's go into a business central there it is so when when I have a flow field here, uh, when I have a customer here, um, and we can see that this customer has a balance, right? Now we can see that the customer has a balance right above my head. Here, that's a balance, right? So this is calculated when needed, just in time calculation. This is never stored, this is never triggered, so this is just calculated now. So if I close this one, we see it's actually already here, so it was also calculated here. If I hit a five, it's recalculated. We can't really see that. If I open the page and scroll back down to uh, to get the number up here, it's calculated again. So we cannot trigger uh, anything off the flow field by itself. The flow field is just expressing the sum of some data setting somewhere else. So in, in, in the question asked was, can we do something with, with blocked when, uh, you know, when a balance gets above the credit limit or something like that? Um, so how would we do that? It's actually not that hard. Um, so first of all, let's figure out what is balance LCY actually. We click on it and we can see that we get customer ledger entries. So that is pretty, a pretty clear indication that it's something with customer ledger entries. We can actually go behind the scenes. So if we go up into uh, VS Code and then we find the the symbols for the base app, which is where the customer uh, card sits. And if you don't get this view when you click on, on a uh, on an app. That is because you are missing one of the greatest extensions ever built. Uh, Andres did this one, the ASET AL Dev Tool slash AL Code Outline. It's a long name, but this one will bring you joy. Uh, so install it. Um, but actually, back to where we were. So now that we have this, I can go in and then I can click on. On the customer table, I double click on that and I can find the source code for the customer table. So I can go and do balance LCY. And we can see that this actually calculates the detailed customer ledger entries amount where whatever filters. Um, so if we want to do something when this flow field changes. What we need to do is that we need to do something when this happens. This is a posting table. So we need kind of react every time something gets posted to this table. Um, but we can do that. And uh, the way we go about that is actually, so let's go back here and grab the empty one. So if we create a code unit, let's give it a random number, a random name, so what we want to do in this code unit is that we want to subscribe to an event. So an event is something that's happening. So while we're posting, uh, and, and maybe we should actually, let's go back here and find the posting routine. So I go back and click on base application. I click on code unit. And in this case, I know that whenever you post uh, in Business Central. Whenever we actually post something like this, uh, this basically goes through the general journal somehow. 
and every time we need to post something with the general journal, it actually happens inside Code Unit 12. That's been this way for 30 years, and it will probably continue. So if we look at this, we can um, we can see if we can find something cost ledger entry. Oh, and you see there's a bunch of that. So that's probably complicated. But what if we say post cost ledger? That doesn't work. Bye bye. We search for for cost ledge entry. That's 518. Okay, so that's probably a bad idea. Um, what we can do is that we can go to the bottom and take a look at what options do we have. So what uh, events are exposed here? Uh, so which one of these can we subscribe? So if we search for cost ledger entry, we can see here in on, on, on this side that there are plenty of, let's see if we can get something with custom ledger entries. Uh, there's really, really many um, events that has something to do with customer ledger entries. And maybe we want to use those, maybe we don't. Maybe we should search for insert. I think that now we have seven things. And, but here, post customer entry. I think we have a winner. So on before customer ledger entry insert, customer ledger entry insert, do, do, on after customer ledger entry insert. I am pretty sure that this one will do the trick and we will get the stuff that has just been inserted. So on after customer ledger entry insert. So I'll, I'll, I'll grab that one and go back to this thing and let's be fancy and actually use a snippet. I very rarely use snippets, uh, but but the T events up, not the Waldo type. No, don't use. The, you can use the Waldo one, uh, uh, but I can use the regular one here. So we know that this is this is the event that we need to subscribe to. This is where we want to do our thing. Um, so it it is a code unit. And it's a code unit that is called Gen Journal Post. Did I get that wrong? Gen Hen. Gen Journal Post Line. That's the one I want. And on some event, it's not some event, that was the one that we put in here. There's no element. And skip on missing license, skip on missing permissions, true, true. And the next thing, so, so the snippet will just give you this empty procedure, which is valid code, but is pointless uh, unless we actually bring in some parameters. So we can do a control space here and say, okay, I want this parameter, I want this parameter. Um, let's see if I'm actually able to type a semicolon. I want this parameter and I want this parameter. The order of this doesn't matter. Actually, and you don't need to grab all of them. So I think I, we could probably do just with the, uh, with the custom ledger entry that's just been created. And this is, what did we do? We do did uh, on after insert. Okay, so I think we need, you know, we need the customer. So let's create a cost rec here, a customer, and then whenever I'm, so we could do cost rec dot get, and then cost let your entry dot customer number. That's perfectly fine. I try to avoid anything that potentially can create a uh, an error when you're in a uh, event subscriber unless you really want to create an error so i prefer to wrap that into a if statement so if for some reason 
I don't know why, but if for some reason the posting routine decides that, hey, I'm posting on a customer that doesn't exist, then I'll not be responsible for this failing. That might be some something else. That might be Microsoft, whatever. I don't know, but it will not be my code that is responsible for breaking it. Somebody else has to break that. I'm just going to ignore it if we're passed in a customer that doesn't exist. Anyway, so now we need to calc cost rec dot calc field. So we're going to calc the balance of UI field. And at this point, so here's the, here's the inter interesting thing. Remember when we looked, let me find this. We're, when we looked at, uh, uh, you know, the field here, and I told you it's going to get calculated um, at this point, meaning that when, when I ask to calculate this now, it will include the record that was just uh, inserted. So now this is the new sum. So we could simply say, okay, if cost rec dot balance LCY is greater than cost rec dot credit limit, then let's block the customer. Cost Reg dot block equal cost reg dot blocked for invoicing. Cost reg dot modify true. So the danger of doing this inside an event subscriber is that if the event that is sitting over here, let's say that somewhere here there is a customer get and then we call our event and then after that is a customer modify then if we do this inside the event subscriber then we will break their modify so ours will work but theirs will break because they are not trying to modify an old version of the record so you got to be careful uh, as soon as you do actual database operations inside an event subscriber. I think this will work. I did not see anything here that would imply that we're going to break that rule. But but let's uh, let's add a breakpoint. And uh, let's try it. Yeah, I think this work. I think this will work. Okay, so let's give this guy a $2,000 credit limit, and he's not blocked. Um, so we will create a new sales invoice. How about that? Uh, and we will sell him a desk. Exactly one desk, so that's fifteen hundred plus. Uh, what did we say his balance was? Seventeen hundred. Anyway, let's hit F nine. We're gonna post this, and we got a breakpoint. Boom, and we are inside our thing so we get the customer we calculate the balance and let's just actually cost rec dot balance lcy three thousand so that's the i think that's right there's probably also some sales tax um so that is right so let's step true f10 we said block to block invoice. We're allowed to modify. And now I'm just going to hit a five. And I don't care about actually seeing the invoice. I do care about this, that now he is blocked. Um, mission accomplished. So, so now we did exactly what we set out to do, that when 
a flow field is changes, we are executing business logic. But in reality, it's not the flow field that we're looking at. We're looking at the source of the flow field. And um, in this case, you, you we could also take a, a different approach. Uh, depending on what kind of flow field, what what you want to what you truly want to avoid is if, if, you, if you have a process that is posting a, a hundred entries of whatever it is, uh, quite often that happens in, you know, in, 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 in the item journal. So if this is an item flow field that you want to react on, don't react a hundred times. You have to find a better event higher up in the call stack that and, and there might be be different ways that you have to do this and subscribe to so you only react once uh, if 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 you're looking at something and you don't care that, that lots of things happens and uh, and and you don't have to react on react with the same reaction on every single one of them you find a place higher up in the call stack to react to to avoid this being a performance track but anyway, that's the way you'd you do this. So check out this video if you want to see more AL coding. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.